Good afternoon. This is Miriam McCune. I am Market Intelligence Manager at North Carolina Sustainable Energy Association. This is the second year our nonprofit has utilized this advisor model in order to display the market trends to help have a very uh, informative and constructive policy conversation. You'll see that we have analyzed the tax credit scenario expected for North Carolina using a parametric analysis based on both the tax credits and the evolving dollar per watt installed cost. Next slide, please. Solar has really grown in North Carolina. In fact, uh, the uh, Solar en Energy Industries Association and Green Tech Media, Media reported that North Carolina ranked fifth in the U.S. for cumulative installed PV capacity compared to eighth in 2011. Uh, economically, the solar industry represents about 2,000 employees in North Carolina in the $3.7 billion clean energy industry in North Carolina. Next slide, please. And you'll also want to click one more time. You'll see the uh, the installation has uh, really been uh, growing for the greater than one megawatt utility scale systems. As of 2012, there were 2,060 solar PV systems totaling over 634 megawatts of capacity registered with North Carolina Utilities Commission. As far as installed, that may be around 300 megawatts, but uh, we uh, are looking at the trends here and the cost files with the North Carolina Utilities Commission in this analysis, which is the second analysis that we've done on LCOE of PV. Uh, the 2013 version will include avoided cost rates and will be expected to be published in late August. Next slide, please. Our methodology is to look at the LCOE using SAM, avoided costs, evaluating grid parity with avoided costs and retail electricity prices published by the Energy Information Administration, and forecast to 2020 to show those grid lines intersecting. Next slide. The uh, levelized cost of energy is our measure of grid parity, and grid parity is the term that uh, is used here simply as a sort of uh, way of measuring the, the cost over the lifetime energy production of the system. We could get into a deeper analysis about what grid parity really means in terms of transmission and distribution, but this is a market analysis that is serving the purpose of evaluating the cost trends. So uh, it's a simple uh, look at the cost, the financing, all that goes into the installed cost, which we assume all this is filed with North Carolina Utilities Commission, over the lifetime energy production, we modeled a uh, direct current to alternating current D-rate factor of 84% for this analysis, tilted at azimuth and uh, no shading. Next slide, please. The changing policy environment is truly affecting the LCO. We, uh, last year, we only looked at the with tax credits, without tax credits scenario, and we realized that wasn't as constructive as really evaluating what happens when, in 2016, in December, the reduction of federal investment tax credit goes from 30 to 10 percent, and then the state tax credit expires at the end of 2015. Also, Something that we're watching closely is the 2013 sequestration of tax credits issued by Department of Treasury, as well as the role that county and city ordinances may play in driving up or down the cost of solar. In fact, NCSDA is working with Solar Center, uh, who manages the desired database of state incentives for renewables, to draft a template ordinance for solar in North Carolina, since we have seen so many utility scale systems in smaller communities. Next slide, please. And click one more time. Our financing options, we've modeled it two ways. Residential includes two size classes out of five, and then we use the commercial PPA with at least a 2% internal rate of return. Uh, 
So we know that the investors who are investing in larger commercial projects, they do want a return. And even though we assume that maybe 15% is included in the installed registered cost, uh, there may be a developer fee associated with that that may not be included in the registration, and that's why we put that in. You'll also see that even though North Carolina has a 35% state tax credit, it's effectively modeled at around 23 to 25%, uh, with, of course, the maxes of 10.5,000 and 2.5 million for residential and commercial, respectively. That, um, 23 to 25% is because on your taxes, you have to pay an adjustment to the federal government for the state tax credit that you took. And um, so that's why it's not 35%. Next slide, please. In terms of the market performance, again, we're looking at the LCOE trends and grid parity with retail electricity prices and avoided costs. Next slide. This slide is taking us to the LCOE, and that was modeled after the dollars per watt, uh, ranging in 2012 between uh, $3.50 for the utility scale up to $6.15 for the smallest class size of 5 kilowatts and under. And you'll see the uh, straight lines are uh or solid lines are lines with tax credit changes and you'll see the the bump up in 2016-2017 for the expiration of the state tax credit in 2016 and the federal tax credit going down to 10% in 2017 but then the market does work to correct itself uh, but overall um, the, the the systems that are most impacted are the smaller ones uh, next slide. This is the percentages of electric utilities, which there are 105 in North Carolina, and consumers at grid parity with LCOE of solar PV systems from 2006 through 2020. And they generally experience um, upward trends, but some show fluctuation due to the incentive changes in 2015, 2016. If you could click one more time, please. And that indicates the uh, fluctuation there. So the number of utilities and consumers at grid parity increased with the capacity of the systems as a result of reduced LCOE due to economies of scale. Moreover, uh, and that's also due to a pre depreciation in the case of commercial systems. Uh, moreover, systems greater than 150 kilowatts are, are less affected than by the changes in tax credits. Next slide, please. And you'll see this for the percentage of electric customers at grid parity, and it has similar trends. Next slide. We're looking at the conclusions now by capacity class in North Carolina. Next slide. Click uh, again, please. And again. And again. Okay, here we have um, PV systems greater than 10 kilowatts with federal and state tax credits are or will be at great parity with commercial retail electricity prices in North Carolina before 2015. All solar PV systems with federal and state tax credits achieve grid parity before 2020, except for systems under 5 kilowatts with investor-owned utilities who have the lowest rates. For solar PV systems larger than a megawatt and smaller than 5 megawatts, it is more difficult to reach grid parity with avoided costs than electricity prices, of course. And we modified the data set we used for the report uh, and updated and reconciled it with survey data that we got back from a consumer survey we issued. But overall, the conclusion is pretty similar to last year's report. According to... Uh, our feedback avoided cost analysis um, was included from last year's report that was suggested by uh, someone. So we also would take suggestions about what to do in uh, 2014. 
We also changed the capacity, capacity classifications within the tax scenario to make it more realistic. Next slide, please. And we're going to look at just the grid parity chart with investor and utilities. In our report, once again, we modeled this for municipal utilities and cooperative utilities, and it's more favorable. But IOUs represent about 65% of the commercial and residential markets, so that's what we're going to look at. And we break them out in our three uh, territories here, Progress Energy, Duke Energy, and Dominion Power and Light. Uh, the first chart that you're looking at on this slide is residential PV under 5 kilowatts. And that dotted line is without incentives, so that's why it's a little bit higher. And the straight uh, solid line is uh, with the tax credits, and that's why it has that bump towards 2017. And then below that, you'll see the percent of utilities, the number of residential customers at grid parity. Of course, this is small and residential, so no depreciation. You're limited to $10,500 credits at 35%, uh, effectively 23%. So it's not that rosy in this picture. If you'll go to the next slide, it gets a little bit better. Uh, we're looking at between uh, above 5 kilowatts up to 10 kilowatts, and you'll see that you, you get some uh, customers and utilities at grid parity with this size system modeled with residential tax inputs. And you'll also see that you're getting some grid parity, some crossover between the three investor-owned utilities around 2015 and, again, around 20. 18, um, and without tax credit, you're still approaching grid parity around 2018. Next slide, please. Now, this is commercial PPA with, remember, that 2% IRR minimum, and it's showing an even rosier picture. Next slide. This slide is indicating um, the commercial PV 150 kilowatts to a megawatt, and that is um, is pretty, it's, it's a, a little bit better than what we saw before, but in terms of the actual uh, customers at grid parity, um, it's a lot better. And then finally, commercial PV over one megawatt, Next slide. And this is the worst picture of the best. In other words, the grid parity is achieved uh, faster in municipal and cooperative territories. However, um, this is still looking really good for utility scale PV, and that's no surprise that many utilities are installing it themselves. Uh, in the hundreds of megawatts now, uh, between 20 to 100 megawatts, a, a lot of uh, systems have been go going in um, in 2013. Next slide, please. Finally, our key findings indicate that PD systems greater than 10 kilowatts will be at grid parity before 2015. All solar PV systems will be at grid parity before 2020, except for systems under 5 kW with investor-owned utility prices. For smaller PV, for solar PV systems larger than a megawatt and smaller than 5 megawatts, it's more difficult to reach grid parity with avoided costs and electricity prices. And finally, systems larger than 150 kW are less affected by tax credit changes. Next slide. In conclusion, uh, we hope you'll read our next report. It will be published in late August, early September. My name is Miriam McCune. I'm manager of market intelligence, and I'm working at North Carolina Sustainable Energy Association located in Raleigh. I'm happy to take your questions live or via email or phone if you have them. Thank you. If you would like to ask a question over the phone, it is star one and record your name.
I'm showing no phone questions at this time. Thank you, and I hope that you read the report. And thanks also to System Advisor Model uh, and National Renewable Energy Laboratory for making such a great public and free tool. Just one moment, I do have a question. Jessica Baratan, Enro. Sir, your line is open. Hello. Is uh, <clears throat> any time of the day rising involved in these types of analysis? No, sir. Actually, we just um, took the LCOE from um, the annualized basis that system advisor model gives oh. to us. Um, but we did have to calculate times of the day to get the avoided cost rate. So we, we use PV watt um, output for Raleigh, North Carolina, and a one megawatt system to um, to calculate the capacity and the energy pieces of avoided cost. Um, so we had to do a little bit of manual labor for that. Thank you. Like, yeah, let, let me know if you'd like to see something specific to times of the day. That might be more of a deeper grid parity analysis. Okay, thank you. Okay.